Remember this movie? Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. It may not seem like a big deal now, but this is one of the first influential steps into a impactful frontier of color. After the colorized television was introduced in 1954, it slowly became popular and was a very important building block in modern technology. Colorized television is an impactful frontier in history because it advanced technology, revolutionized advertisements, and changed our society forever. It was only a matter of time before color television took the world by storm. Ten years later, a Scottish engineer, John Logie Baird, invented the first color television. This was the start of an impactful frontier. Baird was an influential inventor of this frontier because he achieved many firsts in television technology. With these pictures of the original television apparatus now in the South Kensington Museum, we introduce Mr. John Baird, the inventor. It is now 12 years since this apparatus showed the transmission of outline images to the public for the first time. This is the scanning disc with its lenses. This is the second disc by which the light is further divided and passes into the light cell. This apparatus was shown to members of the Royal Institution and others on January 27, 1926 and showed through television images in light and shade for the first time. He started working on television in 1922. He called his great invention the televisor. Then in 1937, Baird created the first working color television. It immediately striked interest in many big broadcasting companies. While trying to get sponsors on board with the idea of colorized television, NBC stated that the colorized television was a major advancement because the resulting 157-page report argued that television gave viewers a reduced sense of psychological distance while also increasing the levels of emotional involvement, empathy, creativity, and comprehension. During the start of color television, two major corporations called RCA and CBS started the color wars. Both companies wanted to be one of the main producers of the new color television. When the FCC looked at both televisions, the CBS system was approved, while the RCA's wasn't, due to low picture quality. Though the battle wasn't over yet, the CBS color television was expensive to make. The screen was constantly shaking, and it would make over 8 million pre-existing television sets in the USA worthless. RCA, on the other hand, was slowly building a coloring device that could be used with the black and white televisions. CBS noticed this and started Operation Rainbow, where it tried to popularize its new color television by placing it in stores where a lot of people could see it. Despite these attempts to win the color war, RCA eventually became the victor. On December 17, 1953, when the FCC finally proved its adapter for the black and white television. This adapter would eventually make black and white television sets stay usable for decades. Wow! I saw color TV, RCA Victor color TV. I know what I've been missing now. Wow! I saw color TV. Gosh! The color is true. Her hair so red, her eyes so blue. It's just as though she's there with you. Gosh! The color is true. And now is the time for you to get an RCA Victor color set. Easy to tune as it can be. And great for black and white TV. Wow! I bought color TV. Dependable natural color TV. In our home there's color now. Wow! We own color TV. Wow! We'll see all the color shows now. RCA, the most trusted name in television. The Congress television was an impactful frontier because it made people feel more connected with the shows they were watching, a feeling that couldn't get re replicated with the black and white televisions. But in order to perfect television, they needed to film various objects and broadcast them on the television. Among these were a basket of strawberries and a wax head named Dean Stocks. Finally, in 1954, it was time to introduce
reduce the car's election to too much. Though business was incredibly slow due to the incredibly expensive prices. Some of the cheaper color televisions were $1,000 or $7,850 in today's money, while the average television was around $1,295, which is around $10,000 in today's money. While well, talking about little known facts, the first colored movie was called A Mrs. of Seaside, though the first popular movie was The Wizard of Oz. This is what the first colored movie looked like. Even though most people wanted the color television, others didn't, including many actors. The New York Times even acknowledges this by saying Woody Allen made one of his rare trips outside of Manhattan today to testify before a congressional panel on what he called the sinful practice of coloring classic old black and white movies. He wasn't the only one who thought this. Many other black and white film stars thought the same thing. Many actors thought that their films were being ruined by the color television. They thought that the color television was a bad idea. And in a way, they weren't wrong. Color television was expensive to make, and even more expensive to make. Black and white movies were considered inferior to the new color films. And many old black and white films were being poorly colored, causing audiences to stop watching the old classics. But the color television slowly improved over time. Princess Barbarian, a person who lived during the creation of the television, stated that, of course, every year or so, they became better. They also became easier to use. But it's expensive. Not everyone could afford it. This breakthrough created a huge advancement in technology. Thanks to the Colorist television, modern devices such as computers, tablets, and phones are able to use color. Color television even revolutionized advertisements by taking advantage of color psychology. In the 1960s, the marketing revolution was taking place. And as a surprise to no one, this was also when the color television was quickly gaining popularity, as it became affordable and had better quality. Studies have shown that up to 90% of snap judgments on products are based on the product's color. Being able to show your product on television that it isn't black and white was a huge deal. Brands such as Pepsi use this to their advantage. Even society itself was permanently affected by the color television. RCA, a company that dominated in the radio business, invested $50 million in television. Not only that, but as the color television grew in popularity, people stopped tuning in for the radio. Radio companies were forced to adapt so they could survive. Since then, radios began to play music. This was a huge change that altered society forever. Changing the purpose of the radio was huge since it was in use since 1920. Politicians began to change the way they campaigned due to the impacts of television. Speeches became shorter as politicians began to talk in sound bites. In many ways, the limited television programming that appeared on these channels established the culture of the times and helped to shape our history. Many attributed to John F. Kennedy's win over Richard Nixon to the televised debates years later. Color television was an impactful frontier because without it, our society and history would be completely different. Because one of the main forms of mass communication, television broadcasting, would be completely different. The color television was an impactful frontier of history because ever since its creation, major corporations have fought over it. Protests have been held against it, and presidential elections have been won because of its usage. The color television was an impactful frontier because it plays a major role in many modern lives. Although most people consider it solely a form of entertainment, it is so much more. The color television is an impactful frontier because it helped us create new technology, allowing us to create better advertisements and even reformed our society forever.